Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and thanks so much for tuning in. Today, we're continuing with the build of my team associated RC10 B6.3 two wheel drive off-road racing buggy. This is the third video in the build series of my B6.3. So if you wanna check out the previous video, I'll put a link in the cards in the top corner and I'll leave a link in the description below. Now, in this video, we'll be focusing on parts bags five and six. And as with previous build videos, I'll add time markers in the description so you can reference or rewatch specific parts of the build without having to scrub through the entire video. And as always, if you want to follow along with this build series, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon to get notifications whenever I upload the next video. Now, let's get started with this build by getting into parts bag five. All right, so now we've emptied out all of the contents of parts bag five. And as in previous videos, I've placed all of the plastic components in this bin here. I've placed all of the metal components in this bin here, and I've placed all of the fasteners in this bin here. Now, in addition to parts bag five, I also opened up the bag that included all of the various fluids that were included with the kit. But in this particular case, for this particular step, we're only going to need the 5,000 CST differential fluid. The other two bottles are the fluid for the shocks, which we will be getting into in a later video. So I'll set these off to the side. The fluid bag also included a small tub of black grease. Now we'll talk about this in just a little bit. So before we actually get started, there are two things I do need to mention. First and foremost is we're not going to actually need the chassis for the time being. In fact, we won't be needing this until really close to the end of this build video. So I'm going to move this thing out of the way for now. The second thing that I did want to mention is that Parts Bag 5 largely deals with the assembly of the gear differential. Now, in this particular case, because my kit is a B6.3, that is to say the high bite version, the carpet version, my kit comes with a gear differential. Now, if you're building a B6.3D, the dirt version that is, comes with a ball differential, and the assembly is going to be a little bit different between the two. Now, once the two differentials are assembled, then everything else is basically the same uh, with respect to the build. So for right now, starting with step number one for bag five, we're going to be getting into the assembly of the gear differential for my B6.3. So. Let's get into that right now. Before we actually get into it, I did want to mention that I'm going to be using my magnetic parts tray here to sort of contain everything. Now, when it comes to building any differential, whether it's a gear diff or a ball diff, you are dealing with fluids and grease, which tends to get a little bit messy. So my advice, when you do start building your own differential uh, or rebuilding it, get yourself some sort of container where you can actually put all your items in. That way you kind of keep your work surface uh, as clean as possible. So going forward, I'm gonna be using this magnetic parts tray to sort of contain everything as we move into the build. So with that said, let's get into step number one. Now, the first thing we're gonna need is a gear diff washer. This is a five by 15 millimeter washer. I'm gonna put there. We're going to need the gear diff gear itself. This is this rather large plastic piece right here. We'll leave that there. Uh, we're gonna need a gear diff O-ring, which is one of these guys right here. It's translucent, might be a little bit hard to see, but it's right there. And we're gonna need a gear diff outdrive or one of the gear diff out, out drives. They're both exactly the same. So we're gonna need this part right here. We'll leave that there. Now, we also need to use some black grease. Now, as I mentioned, Team Associated does give you a small tub of black grease, which is very nice of them to do. However, I'm not gonna actually be using this tub itself. Instead, I actually have a tub of J Concepts RM2 heavy metal grease. Now I got this stuff largely on the suggestion of some of the racers that I've spoken to and some of the shop owners that I've spoken to. They said that this stuff is actually really good and for the price, it's uh, kind of hard to beat. So I ended up going with this stuff. And when it comes to actually applying it, I'm using a syringe with a narrow 
tip. I don't know if you guys can see that on camera. However, by loading this into this syringe, it actually makes it incredibly easy to apply the grease exactly where you want it. Now I picked up these syringes from Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description below if you wanna pick up a set because frankly, they're gonna make your life a lot easier when it comes to both assembly and rebuild eventually later on. So let's get into this. First things first, before I actually put the washer into the gear diff gear itself, what I want to do is I want to apply just a small amount of fluid to the washer itself. I wanna make sure that it doesn't just simply go in dry. So I'm using the fluid that came in the fluid bag itself. I'm gonna put that right at the bottom like that right there. So gear diff washer is now installed. Now the gear diff O-ring it gets installed on the bottom side of the gear diff gear itself. Not sure you guys can see that, but it's right there. And now the next step is to apply a bit of black grease on this portion of the outdrive itself, and then put that into the gear diff gear itself. So I'm gonna do that right now. Let's see if we can do that up here. The grease is now on the outdrive. And now I'm gonna put that and insert it up and through. And there we are. So that brings us to the end of the first bit of bag five, step one. So we'll leave that there for the time being. Now, the next part of step one requires us to use a gear diff outdrive pin, which is this little guy right here, and a gear diff sun gear, which is one of these guys right here. And you can see the bottom, that's where the pin itself will actually locate and hold on to that sun gear. So let's get the pin installed into our assembly here. Now, in order to do that, you need to use a set of needle nose pliers. I'm using a relatively small set of needle nose pliers. And when you do install it, the instructions do state that there is a flat side, a little bit hard to see, but it's right on this side here. When you look down, you'll see it. It's a flat spot and it's there to make it easy to install the pin itself. Now, what you do is you make sure that the outdrive itself, you'll notice, let me use this one here, you'll notice that the outdrive itself actually has a hole for the pin right there. So you'll align the hole such that the pin itself will actually go sort of in this direction like this. So let's do that right now. Okay, so the pin is now installed in our gear diff gear assembly. And we're supposed to put the sun drive in on top of that. Now, before I do, I am going to actually put a small amount of the diff fluid itself so that there's some fluid underneath the actual sun gear before I install the sun gear itself. So just a small amount. We don't wanna to put too much. And I will say this, this 5000 CST is really quite thick. So now let's install the sun gear itself. Make sure that it's oriented so that the pin actually goes into that slot. Okay, so that's that. The sun gear is now installed in the differential itself. And that brings us to the end of step one. On to step number two. All right, so step two calls for the planetary gear assembly, which will ultimately end up making its way into the differential itself. So to get started with that, first thing we're gonna need is the gear differential cross pin, this plastic piece right here. Set that up to the side. We're gonna need our four planetary gears, which are these folks right here. All right, these are the four planetary gears. We're also going to need Four planetary gear O-rings. These are really rather small, probably extremely difficult to see on camera. There they are. And planetary gear shims, which are these four right here. The planetary gear shims, which go on the end of the planetary gears right here. So now we have all these pieces. Let's start assembling. First things first, we have to put some black grease on the back of each of these planetary gears before we put the O-rings in. So let's do that right now. Okay. 
Okay, so we now have our gear diff cross pin with the planetary gears installed with their little O-rings. However, I still need to install the shims, so let's do that right now. All right, so that is now the planetary gear assembly complete and ready to be installed in the differential itself. So let me see if I can give you guys a slightly closer look. There you are. Now this goes into the gear differential itself. So let's do that right now. And that is now in place, just like that. Now, the second part of step two calls for the assembly of the gear diff cover, which will be going on top of this assembly that we've just created. So what we're going to need is a gear diff washer there. We're going to need a gear diff O-ring, which is right there. And we're going to need the gear diff cover itself, which is this plastic piece right here. What it looks like on the bottom, set him aside. And we're going to need the second gear diff out drive, which is right there. So let's assemble that right now. The gear diff O-ring is now installed in the gear diff cover. Now I'm just adding a little bit of the fluid to the gear diff washer itself before putting it into the gear diff cover, just like that. So now the gear diff washer is now in place. Next, we need our gear diff out drive. Add a little bit of grease, just like we did with the first one. And now the gear diff out drive is ready to be installed. And there we are. So the gear diff cover is now complete. And that brings us to the end of step two, on to step number three. All right, so step number three, let's move these out of the way for the time being. Step number three calls for the installation of the sun gear and the outdrive pin. So let's do that right now. So we have our part right here. This is the gear diff cover, which will be getting the pin. And much like we did with the other half of the gear differential, where you have our pin in our needle nose pliers and we insert the pin like so. And there it is. The pin is now installed right there. And now we install the sun gear just like we did with the other half. Now, in this case, again, I want to just use a little bit of fluid here because I want some fluid underneath the sun gear before I install it. We'll do that right there and make sure the slot is aligned with the pin itself that we just installed. So there we are. And this assembly is now ready to go onto the other half of the differential itself. Hope you guys can see that. There we are. So let's get on to assembling the rest of the gear diff itself. So we are going to have to fill the differential, the first half that we built with the 5000 CST. And according to the instructions, we are supposed to fill to the top of the actual cross pins itself. So let's do that right now. Now this stuff is really quite thick. I know there's thicker diff fluid out there, but even this 5000 CST is really quite thick. This is taking a while to fill, but we're getting there. Two hours later. Okay, so this might be a little bit difficult to see on camera. However, we now have the gear differential filled to just above the gear diff cross pin. This uh, 5000 CST fluid that AE gives you in the kit is actually quite thick. So this does take some time. So give yourself the time that you need, spin the out drive a little bit to help sort of move and agitate that fluid around to get it to level out. And eventually you will get there. So now that the diff is filled, let's put the gasket on and finish the assembly. So the instructions call for the differential gasket Kit, which gets installed like so. And then 
we install the gear diff cover on the gear differential itself. However, before I do, I do wanna make note of something and let you guys see something here. Now you'll notice that the gear diff cover has three sort of locating pins on it and there's one missing on this corner here. Now this is done so that you can insert the pin into the outdraw during assembly, which you guys just saw me do. Now, when you install the gear diff cover itself, make sure that where there is no pin here, when you do install it, let's see if I can show you this, there is, it's kind of hard to see on camera here, but there is a sort of small pin on this side here of the, the gear diff, which is sort of on the outside. Make sure that that is on the side where there is no pin on the cover. This is done for balancing. So as this thing is spinning, the same amount of mass is distributed all the way through so that you don't have a wobbly diff. So when you assemble yours make sure that you do that so well, let's do that right now and there we are two halves are now together and we need to use four m2.5 by 10 millimeter button head cap screws in order to bolt everything together those are all right here four button head cap screws and we'll bolt this cover into place so let's do that right now All right, so that there is the assembly of the gear differential. Now, one thing I do wanna mention, when you do tighten up the cover, do so in a cross pattern. Don't just start one side and make your way all the way around. And you don't need a whole lot of tension. These things are going into plastic, so just tighten them up until they're snug and you should be good. Smooth. So that is the gear diff complete. And that brings us to the end of step three and the end of parts bag number five. On to parts bag number six. Actually, before we get into parts bag six, I wanna deviate a little bit from the plan build. Now, for those of you who've seen the unboxing video, and if you haven't, I'll leave uh, a link in the cards up above here. You'll remember that I said that many of the tracks that are local to me are actually either carpet or hard plaque clay. Well, generally speaking on some clay surfaces, it's actually preferred that you use a ball differential instead of a gear diff. So what I've decided to do is actually go ahead and build a ball differential for my kit. And I can just swap this out depending on which track I go to visit. This is kit number 91702 and it is the complete ball diff kit. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually build this. So let's clear some area here and get into the build of the ball differential. All right, so we've cleaned up our work area here and I've emptied out the ball diff kit bag. And as per usual, I've put all the plastic parts in this bin here. I've put all the metal parts in this bin over here and I've put the fasteners in this bin over here. Now, a couple things that I should mention first and foremost, the kit itself actually did come with a tub of clear grease as well as a small tub of black grease. I'm gonna set these aside for the time being. We're gonna talk about these in just a few seconds. The kit also did come with a couple of bearings. Now, this is actually kind of an interesting thing to note. Now, these two bearings here were actually also included in the B6.3 kit originally. In fact, they are right here. The thing is, when you buy the carpet version of the B6.3, Team Associated actually gives you the bearings that you would need for a ball differential. However, you don't actually end up using them when you're building the carpet car. So in actuality, you end up with two extra bearings when you're finished assembling the carpet kit. So for those of you who are assembling the carpet kit and you find that you've got two extra bearings left, now you know why. In my case, I'm gonna use the bearings that came in the ball diff kit. But either way, I've got an extra set of bearings here. So I'll leave these off to the side. Obviously, since this assembly manual is meant for the carpet car that comes with a gear differential, I've actually gone to the Team Associated website and printed off the pages from the assembly manual for the B6.3D. And they are right here. So in this particular case, we're going to be following the steps from the B6.3D manual. So we're going to get started with bag five, step number one for the ball differential. 
All right, so the first part of step one has us installing the carbide diff balls into the actual diff gear itself. Now, the diff gear is this plastic piece right here. And one thing that I do need to mention about this, and it says this in the instructions, that there are three injection marks on one side of the diff gear. Those injection marks should be on the downward facing surface. So we're gonna be installing the diff balls in this direction here. So we're gonna put that in our tray here, set these off to the side for the time being. And we're also going to need some diff lube. Now the ball diff kit itself does come with a small tub of diff lube. However, I'm not gonna be using this tub. And the diff lube that I'm going with is another J Concepts product. This is also the RM2 Clear Diff lube. Again, this was suggested to me by shop owners and racers that I've spoken to. And much like the black grease, I have put the diff lube in a syringe with a narrow tip, which will make it a lot easier to apply and control. So let's get into it. This now, in this case, I'm going to start by putting a little bit of diff lube on the diff gear itself. So let's do that right now. All right, so I hope you guys can see that. I applied some grease in the holes. So now let's get the balls into this gear and into each one of the holes. So, so it's a good idea to leave the balls in the bag. They're really small, so they're very easy to lose. And what you can do is you can actually use the bag to put the balls into the gear itself to keep from losing them. All right, so now that the balls are in the diff gear, I'm gonna use my poker tool and actually push them around into each one of the holes. Bit of a tedious job, but a little bit of patience. It's not that hard. Okay. So diff balls are now installed in one ball per hole. So let's set that aside and get on to the second part of step one. Now, the second part actually has us installing the diff drive rings onto the diff out drives themselves. So these are the out drives and you'll notice they are different. One has a protruding piece while the other one doesn't. So keep that in mind, there are two different ones. And the diff drive rings themselves. Now, these are the ones that came in the kit and these are perfectly fine to use. However, what's really important is that they really should be as flat and as smooth as possible. So in my case, I'm actually not going to be using the kit drive rings and instead I've actually opted for the factory team precision ground diff drive rings. Again, this is another one of those suggestions that was made to me by some of the shop owners and racers that I've talked to. They said that this is actually a very worthwhile upgrade. So I've decided to go with these. So let's get into these. All right, now, before we actually continue with this build, the one thing that I should mention, which is really pretty important, is that it is a good idea to clean the out drives themselves as well as the diff rings because they do come with an oily sort of coating from the factory. This is applied largely to keep them from corroding and rusting, but it's a good idea to clean these off because it could react with the actual grease itself. So most racers use engine spray to clean off these parts. I actually don't have any engine spray, but I'm going to be using my trusty alcohol wipes. This should work just as well as any engine spray. So if you don't have any, but you have these wipes, these will do just fine. So let's go ahead and clean these off. All right. So we've now cleaned off our parts and they are ready to be assembled. And in case you're wondering, yes, the cloth itself is dirty. So clearly with some grease and oil on those things. So as I said, it's important to do that. So let's get this out of the way. Now to assemble these is actually pretty easy. We're just gonna be applying some diff lube onto the flat area on each of the out drives, which is where the rings will land and then put the rings on top and then apply a bit more diff grease on top of those. So let's do that right now. Okay, so the first out drive is now done. As you guys can see, I've already installed the diff drive ring itself. And when you do so, go ahead and just move it around. Make sure you get it really nicely seated on there as well as get plenty of grease underneath the ring itself. So that's the first one. I'm going to apply a little bit more grease on top.
and that's that. First ball diff out drive is now complete. I'll do the exact same steps for the second one. All right, so that is now the second out drive complete with its diff drive ring and grease applied. So that now brings us to the end of step one onto step number two. All right, so the first part of step two has us assembling the differential thrust bearing and putting it onto the differential thrust bearing bolt. Now, the ball diff kit actually gives you all the pieces you need in order to assemble the thrust bearing itself. And let's see if the camera will focus which is largely just made up of two washers and a series of balls that are all sort of assembled and packed together in some black grease. Now, this design actually works very well and it's been around for a long, long period of time and it's proven to be fairly reliable. However, I'm not actually going to be going with the kit supplied thrust bearing and instead, I've opted for this here. This is the Protec RC Precision Caged Thrust Bearing Set. This is kit number PTK 2026. Now, I've done this for a couple of reasons. First off, it actually makes the assembly a whole lot easier for you as the bearings themselves are actually encapsulated in a cage. The second reason why I've gone with this set is because the bearings themselves are actually ceramic, so they'll provide much less friction and prove to have a longer service life. So let's get into this thing and take a look at what actually comes in the kit. Okay, so these are some really pretty small parts. However, I think you guys can see, so you've got the bearing cage right there, along with the two washers that go with it. Now the bearing cage itself will actually be sandwiched between those two washers, and we're gonna use some black grease to kind of lubricate and hold everything together. So let's get into that right now. We're going to need the differential thrust bolt itself, and we're going to start by first taking one of the washers putting it onto the bolt itself. And hopefully you guys can see the groove is facing in this direction here. So let's get some black grease on there right now. And as before, this is the same black grease that I used when assembling the gear differential. So this is the RM2 heavy metal grease. So there we can see grease is now applied to the washer. Now we'll get our bearing cage on there. All right, so bearing cage is now in place. Really hoping the camera will focus on this. And now we add the second washer on top of that. And remember when you do add second washer, the groove is facing the bearing cage itself, so. Okay, and that, and this is a little bit messy, but that is now thrust bearing assembly on the thrust bolt itself, complete. So let's just set this aside. So the second part of step two has us installing a bearing into one of the out drives. Now the out drive that we're using is the one that doesn't have the extending piece coming out of it. So here's one of our bearings that goes in there. And now we insert our thrust bearing bolt up through the out drive. Now, in order to do that, it is best to use your wrench. This is a 2.0 wrench, which gives you a little bit better control to push up and through. And there we are. So that part is now complete. And the next part of step two involves taking the ball diff gear, putting it over top of that assembly, and then putting the second bearing onto the gear itself. That is now step two complete. Let's get on to step number three. All right, so moving on to the first part of step three, we are supposed to compress the ball diff spring before moving on. So let's do that right now. I'm going to use a set of pliers to compress it just one time, yeah, twice. All right, 
So spring is now compressed. We're going to also need a locking T-nut, which comes off of this sprue right here. So we have our locking T-nut, that's what it looks like. And we're going to need the assembly we created earlier, along with the second outdrive itself. Now, before assembling, I'm going to use my 2-0 wrench to hold the thrust bearing bolt in place. Now, I'm going to take the second outdrive. This is the outdrive with the part that protrudes. You guys can see, slip that over the assembly, insert the spring, and then we insert the T-nut. As you can see, the T-nut itself has these two ears. They slide down into the outdrive slots. And now that it's in, just hold it in place and we can start to tighten this thrust bearing screw. Okay, so now that is the ball differential completely assembled. Now, one thing that I do want to mention, you don't want to over tighten your ball differential when you initially assemble it. In fact, you want to leave it a little bit loose. The only thing you don't want is you don't want to be pulling on the outdrives back and forth and actually feel them moving. Now, the reason why you don't want to over tighten this is because you want to actually go through a break-in procedure after you install the ball differential in the car itself. So we're not going to go through any sort of break-in procedure today. Maybe later on, I'll make a video of doing a ball differential break-in but for now, the ball differential itself is complete. Now there is one more part that needs to be installed and that is the dust cap. This piece is right here on this brew. It's just this little dust cap here that you guys can see. Now, I'm not gonna install this for the time being. I'm gonna leave this off for now and the reason why is because I want access to this bolt, the thrust bearing bolt itself during the break-in procedure. So I'm gonna leave this off for the time being. So that's that. Now you guys have seen two different differentials assembled, ball diff and a gear diff during this video. Now we can move on to bag six. Okay, so now we've emptied out all of the contents of bag number six. And as is typical practice, I've put all the plastic pieces in this bin over here. I've put all of the metal components and composite components in this bin over here. And I've put all of the fasteners in this bin over here. So now that we've got our area sort of cleaned up and ready to go, let's get into parts bag six, step number one. All right, so first part of bag six, step one, calls for the assembly of the transmission itself. Now, before I get into it, I do want to make mention that this is another area where the B6.3 and the B6.3D kits differ. Much like with the gear differential being included with the B6.3 kit, the B6.3 includes what's called a laydown transmission, whereas the B6.3D comes with both a laydown and a layback transmission. The differences between these two transmissions has to do with the placement of the motor. The laydown transmission moves the motor as far forward in the chassis as possible to help shift the center of gravity forward. This sort of setup helps the most in high traction surfaces. The lay back transmission moves the motor rearward in car, shifting weight rearward, aiding in low traction situations. Now the assembly of either transmission is basically identical. So if you're building a B6.3D, you can still follow along in the build here. But unlike those of us building a B6.3, you'll have to first decide which transmission is best suited for your particular track conditions before moving forward. So with that said, let's get on with the assembly of the lay down transmission. So we're going to need the two halves of the lay down gearbox itself, which are here and here. These two plastic pieces right here. Next, we're going to need four bearings. These are five by 10 by four millimeter bearings, which I believe are these four right here. So we have those. We're also going to need our lay down top shaft, which is this guy right here. And take a look at that. We're also going to need 39 tooth idler gear, which is this guy right here and we're also going to need the idler gear shaft this piece here it's what looks like to be a solid 
aluminum piece. So, and we're also going to need two three by 16 millimeter button head cap screws, which are these right here. We're gonna need two of those two button head cap screws. So I think we are now ready to actually begin the assembly of the lay down transmission itself. So let's get into that right now. Okay, so I've assembled half of the transmission itself. We have the top shaft here. We have a bearing on one side and we have a bearing that's in the housing on the other side. We have our idler gear with two bearings inserted on either side and the aluminum idler gear shaft that's also been inserted. So now we need the other half of the transmission housing itself, which goes right here. So now we use our two button head cap screws to bolt it all together. Okay, so that's now the lay down transmission assembled. Onto the second part of step one, which is the installation of the rear ball stud mount. So we first need the rear ball stud mount, which is this very nice anodized blue aluminum piece. We're also going to need one 2.5 by eight millimeter flat head or flush head cap screw. So this guy right here. We're also going to need two heavy duty eight millimeter ball studs, which are here and here. So we have those. And we're also going to need four two millimeter thick washers, which are these right here. And we will put two under each of the two studs. So before we do that, we're also going to need some thread lock. So I'm bringing out my trusty piece of plastic. And we can begin with the assembly and the installation of the rear ball stud mount. Do that right now. Okay, so the rear ball stud mount is now completely assembled. Now let's install this onto the transmission itself. And to do that, we're going to be installing it right here. You can see that small hole, that's for our flathead cap screws. So let's do that right now. All right, so that is now the installation of the ball stud mount onto the transmission itself. And that brings us to the end of step one. Now on to step number two. All right, on to step number two. Now, step number two is the assembly of the rear anti-roll bar. And we are to start with the end links. Now, for those of you who have been following along in the build, in the very first build video where we covered parts bags one and two, you may remember that there was a small issue with the end links in that they were not in parts bags one or two. Well, the same applies with the end links for parts bag six. However, there is a note here that says, they are located in bag number nine, which I happen to have right here. And this is where those parts are. In fact, it's the same sprue where we found the end links for the front sway bar. So the end links themselves are actually any of these eight. We're gonna take these four here to start the build of the end links themselves. So let's cut them off the sprue right now. All right, so we now have the ball cups that are going to be used for the end links of the rear anti-roll bar. In addition to those, we're also going to need two anti-roll bar pivots right here. And we're also going to need two M3 by 10 millimeter set screws, which are here and here. So now we have everything we need to assemble the end links. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so the front sway bar end links are now complete. 
Now, I should mention when you do assemble these, the manual does call for a two millimeter gap between the two ball cups. That's why you saw me use my calipers earlier to maintain a two millimeter gap. And of course, I just snapped the anti-roll bar pivot into place once everything was assembled. So those are the two end links ready to go. The next part is to actually assemble the anti-roll bar with its collar. So we're going to need the anti-roll bar itself, which is right here. We're going to need the anti-roll bar collar, and we're going to need an M3 by three millimeter set screw, which is right here. Pretty small. And this is fairly simple operation of sliding the collar onto the roll bar, placing it roughly in the center, and then installing the set screw itself. And there we are, the rear anti-roll bar complete. And that now brings us to the end of step number two. Now we can move on to step number three. All right, so step three involves the installation of the rear differential into the transmission itself. Now, before we actually do that, we first need to get our appropriate diff height inserts, and those are actually on this sprue right here. Now, the kit itself includes four different inserts, and we're gonna be using two of them. The kit itself calls for a, what they call a three setup. There's three, two, one, and zero, and each one corresponds to a different height where the rear differential actually sits in the transmission that is to say how high or how low it sits in the transmission. So in this particular case, like I said, it calls for a three, which is going to be these two inserts right here, oriented such that the differential will actually sit as high in the transmission as possible. So let's get these inserts off the sprue right now. Okay, the next thing we're gonna need are a couple of 10 by 15 by four millimeter bearings right here. And we're also going to need the differential itself. Now, obviously you guys just watched me build both the gear differential as well as the ball differential. Obviously I have the choice. I could put either one into the transmission. However, in this particular case, I'm going to go with the gear differential because I'm building this following the instructions. So we're gonna go with the gear differential. But of course, having the ball differential already built, I can always swap between the two of them anytime Time I want. Before we install this, we're also going to need some differential lube, which of course is what I have here in the syringe. So let's get started with assembling the differential and get it ready to be installed in the transmission. So first things first, we're gonna install two bearings, one on either side of the differential, and then our diff inserts. Again, one on either side of the differential. So now you can see how the insert itself is actually going to position the, the differential up high in the transmission itself. So it's gonna go in like this. So before I actually insert it, the instructions do call for a little bit of diff lube on the actual gear itself. So let's do that right now. Okay, so now the differential is installed in the transmission and we can see that the insert has positioned the differential as high as it will go. Next, we will install the anti-roll bar and the lay down transmission gearbox top, which is right here. And this will actually cover the differential itself. So let's get into doing that right now. First things first, the anti-roll bar gets inserted into the transmission right there as you guys can see. And now we'll put the cover on top, which should hold everything in place. And now the transmission cover is installed. And next we have to install the anti-roll bar end links. And in order to do that, we need two M3 by three millimeter set screws. These two guys right here. So let's do that right now. All right, and there we are. Rear anti-roll bar installed along with its end links and the laid down gearbox top along with the differential and its inserts are now done. That brings us to the end of step number three onto step number four. 
All right, so the first part of step number four has us bolting down the top cover of the gearbox that we just installed, along with cinching down the rear anti-roll bar, which we also just installed in the previous step. Now, in order to bolt this down, first we need two M3 by 12 millimeter button head cap screws and two M3 by 16 millimeter button head cap screws. So here we have the screws that we're gonna need, the longer ones, obviously being the 16 millimeter and the shorter ones being the 12 millimeter. We'll set these off to the side for just a second. And we're also going to need two M3 by three millimeter set screws to cinch down the rear anti-roll bar. Set those aside for just a second as well. So the shorter screws, that is to say the three by 12 millimeter screws are actually going to be going in this hole here and the opposite hole on the other side here, while the longer screws are actually gonna be going into this hole here and the opposite one over there. And the set screws will actually be going in here and in here. So let's do that right now. All right, so the gearbox cover is now bolted down. Now we just gotta cinch down the rear anti-roll bar. Now, I should mention, when you do cinch this down, don't over tighten it. What you're actually doing when you install these set screws is you're just eliminating the up-down movement of the rear anti-roll bar itself. You're not actually going to try and restrict its movement. It should still move freely. So let's do that right now. Okay, so now the set screws that hold the rear anti-roll bar in place are now set. Hopefully you guys can see that. And the anti-roll bar still moves nice and smoothly. Now the second part of step number four is the installation of the lay down chassis brace as well as installation of two additional fasteners that hold the two halves of the gearbox together. So let's get those parts together right now. now. One thing I should mention, in the kit, what you do get is actually two chassis braces. These are also called waterfall braces. Now, in the case of the B6.3, I believe the one that we're supposed to use is the longer of the two right here. Here, so let's get that off the sprue right now. In addition to the chassis brace, we're also going to need a couple of other things in order to finish off step four, which is a shock pivot ball, as well as one three by 16 millimeter button head cap screw and one three by 20 millimeter button head cap screw. So let's get those together. So here's our shock pivot ball. We'll set that aside for a second. We're also going to need one of these and one of these. So this is our three by 16 millimeter and three by 20 millimeter button head cap screw. So let's finish up the installation of the chassis brace. So first things first, the shock pivot ball mounted in here and using a set of needle nose pliers, we press this into place. All right, now this gets inserted here and is held in place with a three by 16 millimeter button head cap screw. There we are, the chassis brace is now installed and the three by 20 millimeter button head cap screw gets installed in that hole there. So let's do that right now. All right, so that is now complete and brings us to the end of step number four on to step number five. All right, so step five begins with us installing the gear guard and the lay down motor plate to the gearbox itself using three three by 10 millimeter flat head cap screws. So let's gather the parts we need and get started with that. Here is the gear guard itself. So we'll get that off the sprue right now. And our motor plate is right here. And we need three three by 10 millimeter flat head cap screws. So let's get these installed on the gearbox right now. All right, so the gear guard and motor plate are now installed using three flathead cap screws onto the gearbox. 
Let's set this aside for now. The second part of step five has us assembling the slipper clutch. Now let's gather all the parts we're gonna need so we can get into that. First thing we're gonna need is our spur gear. Now, the kit itself actually comes with two spur gears. This is a 72 tooth, and this one here is a 78 tooth. Both are 48 pitch. The 72 tooth is intended for use with stock motor racing, meaning 17.5 turn and higher. Whereas the 78 tooth spur gear is intended for mod class racing, that is to say faster motors or lower turn motors. Now, in my case, I'm gonna be running stock class, so I'm gonna be using the 72 tooth, and I'm gonna set the 78 tooth spur gear aside for the time being. Next, we're going to need our slipper clutch hubs. And that's this and this right here. Here are the slipper clutch hubs. The one with the smaller boss is the inner hub, whereas the one with the larger boss is the outer hub. The inner one is the one that goes up against the gearbox. The outer one faces away from the gearbox. Next, we're gonna need our slipper clutch pads, which are these two here. They're both identical. And the next part we're gonna need is the top shaft screw and pin, which is this piece right here. Now, I should mention, and hopefully the camera will focus, and that pin is a separate piece. However, it's not very easy to fit into this top shaft screw. I ended up having to actually use a hammer to get that in place. So keep that in mind when you're going through your own build. You may need to use a hammer in order to get that in there. Now, we have everything we need in order to assemble our slipper clutch, so let's go ahead and do just that. Now, one thing I do need to mention is the walls, that is to say these plastic protruding walls that are on the spur gear, these need to face away from the gearbox, so keep that in mind as well. Okay, so that is our slipper clutch, now completely assembled and ready to go. And that brings us to the end of step five onto step number six. All right, so step six begins with us installing the slipper clutch onto the gearbox itself. Now, before we do that though, we're going to need a few additional parts, starting with the spring adapters. Now, these are the spring adapters themselves and looking at them, they look pretty much identical. However, when I flip them over, you'll notice that they are different. This one here is flat on one side and this one here has a small boss on this side. This one here is the inner spring adapter and this small boss has to face the gearbox where this one here is the outer spring adapter and this flat face faces away from the gearbox. This will make a little bit more sense when we actually get into the assembly. So. We're also going to need our slipper spring, which is this guy right here. Now, unlike the ball differential spring where we had to pre-compress it, the manual doesn't say anything about pre-compressing the spring, so we're not going to do that. And we're also going to need an M3 flanged lock nut, which is this guy here. So now that we have everything we need, we can actually go ahead and install the slipper clutch assembly onto the gearbox itself. So let's do that right now. I should mention, I'm going to actually do this a little bit differently than the manual actually shows. I think it's actually easier to sort of disassemble the slipper clutch and kind of install this one piece at a time. So I'm gonna do that right now. Starting with the inner flange, I'm going to install this first. That way it's nicely bottomed out. Then I'll take the spur gear with the two slipper plates, put them in place, then the outer hub, and then finally, the spur shaft bolt. There, now the slipper clutch assembly is now on the gearbox, and we now install the spring on the other side. Starting with the inner spring adapter, the small boss that goes towards the gearbox, then our spring, followed by the outer spring adapter with the flat side facing away from the gearbox, and then our flanged lock nut. And there we are. The slipper clutch is now installed in the gearbox. Now we can move on to the second part of step six, which involves preparing the rear shock tower for installation onto the gearbox itself. So let's gather all the parts we're going to need for that. First things first, we're going to need the rear shock tower itself. This is a very nice carbon fiber piece. We're going to need four M3 by 20 millimeter button head cap screws, which are all right here. 
We're also going to need our rear wing mounts, which are here on this sprue. So we're going to need these two parts here, as well as these two parts here. So let's get these off the sprue right now. We're also going to need two shock bushings. These are 12 millimeter shock bushings. These are these two parts right here. We're also going to need two M3 by 22 millimeter button head cap screws, which are right here. And we're also going to need the rear tower covers. Now, the rear tower covers are actually not in bag six, but instead they are in bag 10, which I happen to have right here. And those rear tower covers are right there and there. So let's get these out of bag number 10 right now. All right, so we now have everything we need in order to finish up step six. So let's get started with the rear wing mounts. Okay, so the rear wing mounts are now finally installed on the rear shock tower. Let's move on to installing the rear tower covers and the shock bushings. Now, according to the instructions here, the shock bushings are to go through the second hole from the most outboard side. So we're gonna come in one hole. So let's do that right now while we install the shock covers. All right, so that is now the rear shock tower complete, which brings us to the end of step six, on to step number seven. All right, so step seven begins with us installing our rear shock tower and wing mount assembly onto the gearbox itself using four M3 by 12 millimeter button head cap screws, which are right here. So let's do that right now. Okay, so now the rear shock tower and rear wing mounts are now installed on the gearbox. Good. The second part of step seven has us installing the gearbox and rear shock tower assembly onto the chassis itself. So in order to do that, let's clear out some of this stuff and bring the chassis back in so we can get started. All right, so now that I have the chassis back in the work area, we can go ahead and install the gearbox assembly onto the chassis itself. Now, in order to do that, we're gonna need two M3 by 16 millimeter flathead cap screws, which are right here. And we're also going to need six M3 by 10 millimeter flathead cap screws, which are all right here. Before we go ahead and actually put the gearbox onto the chassis, you may remember from the previous video that when we installed the rear D block, there is no actual fastener holding this thing in place. So there's nothing really holding the rear suspension arms in position right now. So flipping over the chassis in order to actually install the gearbox may result in everything kind of falling apart back here. However, the holes of the D block right here are actually threaded. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to insert the two M3 by 16 millimeter bolts underneath and actually get those started so that I can hold the D block in place. So let's do that right now. All right, so now that the D block is being held in place, we can go ahead and install the gearbox. One eternity later. Okay, so that is now the gearbox mounted onto the chassis. And as you guys saw, the two M3 by 16 millimeter screws went in these two holes here, while the remainder went into these holes here, here, and here. So that now 
brings us to the end of step seven and the end of this build video. Now I realize this was a long one. However, we did cover a lot of ground in this one. So if you found any of this useful or even mildly entertaining, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you wanna follow along with the rest of this build series, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to get notified when I upload the next video. Thanks very much for watching guys. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.